already know how to represent parts of a whole using fractions. Today we're going to talk about using them as decimals instead. First, I'd like to show you this diagram right here. We have a whole, and then we have what represents 10 slots, or a tenth, three of them being colored in, therefore it's three tenths. You notice that can also be written as a decimal, which is pronounced the same, three tenths. So 3 over 10 is equivalent to 0.3. So that is how you can write a fraction as a decimal. Okay, I have two fractions here that we're going to write out as decimals. Sometimes it's very easy. For instance, the first one, we have 7 over 10, which is pronounced 7 tenths. So to write that as a decimal, we make it literally 7 tenths. Now the bottom one cannot, does not equal 0.5 because this fraction represents 5 eighths rather than 5 tenths. So this next process I'm going to show you using long division is how you would convert 5 eighths to a fraction. Before I jump in to show you how to make this fraction into a decimal, let's go over some terms first. This top number is called a numerator and the bottom number is called the denominator. That's important with what we're going to do next. We're going to set this up like a long division problem. Okay? So we'll put our brackets. Now the key here is your numerator goes on the inside and your denominator goes on the outside. So we ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 5? We know that answer is nothing. So we're going to put a 0 here. What we're going to do next is we're going to put a decimal after and a zero because 5.0 is the same as five. It's like five dollars in no sense is the same as just five dollars. So now how many times does eight go into 50? That answer is six. We're gonna put our decimal right back and then we're just going to treat it as a normal problem. We can add another zero and bring it down. How many times does 8 go into 20? Okay, 2 times. Bring it down again, and put another 0. We can continue on until we get uh, with no remainder, or until we get to the thousands place. So how many times does 8 go into 40? Your answer is 5 times. So 5 eighths. As a, as a decimal is 625 thousandths. Can you tell me what 9 tenths would be in decimal form? If you just say it, you can get your answer. 0 0.9. Okay, let's try 63 hundredths. Okay, 0 0.63, that is 63 hundredths. Let's look at these three fractions. We have 3 tenths, 3 one hundredths, and 3 one thousandths. It's important that when we do the decimals that they also look different because they represent completely different values. For instance, 3 tenths is 10 times greater than 3 one hundredths. 3 one hundredths is 10 times greater than 3 one thousandth. And if we take 3, 3 tenths is 100 times greater than 3 one thousandths. So we must represent that in decimal form as well. So just like last time, 3 tenths is 0 0.3. Because there's only one zero, so there needs to be one number behind the decimal. Now you notice that there are two zeros. So we need two numbers behind the decimal. Three hundredths is a lot like three cents because there are a hundred cents in a dollar. It is not. That would be thirty cents, so it's completely different. So when we get to the thousandths, since there are one, two, three zeros, there needs to be three digits after the decimal. And that is how we would find thousandths. Sometimes you're given a number like this. Six decimal point zero three one 
And when you want to convert that into a fraction form, this number right here must remain a whole number because it's to the left of the decimal, meaning that it's greater than 1, 1 or greater. So we're going to write that as our big number. Now, we're going to count the digits behind the decimal. We're going to count 1, 2, 3. So when we do our denominator, that's how many zeros need to be after your 1. So we have 1, and then we have 1, 2, 3 zeros. And then it's as simple as just writing in the digits from the top. So 6 and 31 thousandths, 6 and 31 thousandths. It's the same thing. So let's try See if you can do that one. To do this problem, writing the 7 large again, and then counting the digits, 1, 2, 3, that's how many zeros go, and you put the 56 on top, so 7 and 56 thousand.